Of all the players on Dimension 20, I think that Zakoyama is probably the most underappreciated. He is ruthlessly efficient in basically everything he does, from jokes and one-liners to full character concepts. There's never really any fluff or anything that isn't absolutely necessary. The embodiment of his playstyle is less is more. His characters are always built off of a simple idea and can be summed up in just a few words. Emo barbarian, himbo firefighter, adult baby. But he takes those simple ideas and he builds off them to make an archetypical but not a stereotypical character with surprising depth and dimension. So how does he do this? Well, let's dig into his playstyle and find out. But before we get too deep, I want to quickly discuss what I mean when I say necessary. Obviously, D&D isn't necessary for survival. You don't need to play an RPG every so often or you die. Though it can suck when you go through a dry spell, for lack of a better term. In recent years, there's been a lot of talk and encouragement towards economical storytelling. Don't include characters or scenes that don't advance the plot or theme, that sort of thing. A lot of folks, when they're trying their hands at storytelling, tend to write or tell too much. The story becomes bloated and boring, so they're encouraged to kill their darlings and trim it down to the barest essentials. And that can be good advice, but in my experience, a lot of stories really suffer for this because too much gets cut. And instead of a fully fleshed out story, you just get something that feels like an outline or a bullet point list of events. It can suck the life out of a story and make it feel flat and empty. So there's a fine line to walk. And I think it comes down to defining what is necessary to a story. And that depends on what the story is doing. It can be really difficult to discern what is and is not necessary. Is a joke necessary? Is a short scene where two characters get to know each other necessary? What about just a quiet moment that allows the audience to catch their breath? These aren't easy choices to make. And I think one of the things that Zack excels at is he has great judgment for necessity. Dimension 20 is a comedy show, so jokes are necessary. And he's able to pick and choose the exact moments where he can add something really funny. I think the best example of this isn't from Dimension 20. It's from Make Some Noise. A defendant stupidly interrupting his lawyer's closing remarks. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, over the past four days, you have seen state's prosecutor attempt to effectively bamboozle you with a series of hearsay arguments and loose speculative evidence placing my client near the scene of the crime during the time of the murder. This evidence does nothing to indicate motive or means in the horrific murder of Roger Bell. Ultimately, it will be your decision to say, does this man deserve a lifetime in a federal penitentiary based on specious, inconclusive evidence. You are tasked to consider the evidence and whether it proves beyond a reasonable doubt whether my client is guilty. Is my client a perfect man? No. I killed him, yeah. <laughs> this scene is brilliant. Brennan is there improvising a whole closing statement and then Zach at the absolute perfect moment drops one sentence and steals the entire scene. He has an incredible sense of when and where to place his words and mannerisms to get the best bang for his buck. And he does this in basically everything that he's in. And since this is a D&D YouTube channel, let's see how this applies to Dimension 20. Let's dig into one of Zack's characters. I want to talk about Ricky Matsui. Ricky is best described as a himbo, an extremely good-looking, kind, and compassionate man who's also pretty dumb. This is not a complicated character concept. It's about as simple as it gets. Ricky almost seems like a one-note joke character, but he never really comes off that way. He feels like a real person with three dimensions, despite not really having them, at least not in the first season. But let's take a look at Ricky's introduction. And we hear, uh, as a raging inferno melts the snow overhead. The third and fourth story of this building are engulfed in flame. There is a little eight-year-old girl with a little bit of soot and smoke on her face. She's clutching a little a teddy bear in her hand, looking at the bar and yelling down, I'm scared, I'm scared. With an eruption of force, the door of the room explodes into cinders. Zach, could you describe your character for us? Uh, I'm uh, Ricky Matsui. I'm a, f a firefighter in New York, uh, uh, specifically in Brooklyn. Uh, I believe in just doing the right thing. And I, I always wanted to be a firefighter, so I accomplished that goal. So I'm feeling really good about myself. I'm pretty much set for life, I guess. Um, <laughs> and I'm just here to help. <gasps> Are you a firefighter? 
I am. <laughs> uh, what's Ricky do? First, Ricky's like, that's a really cool bear. <laughs> what's his name? His name's Theo. All right, hold on to Theo real tight, and then I'm gonna pick you up, and we're all just gonna have a fun time getting out of here. He picks the girl up with just one arm, and he, uh, he, you know, he, yeah, he's like, Kind of like a Superman-ish, if he were Japanese. <laughs> uh, and he's just ready to get out of there. You see that a boom beam, a burning beam, falls down behind you. You feel it about to happen a second before it happens. You jump, tumble, somersault with the girl holding onto her in your arms. She's holding onto her bear. There is now a burning obstacle in the way. I say, look out the window real fast. Uh, <laughs> she looks out the window real fast. Um, you channel the power within you. Your fireman's axe, the questing blade at your side, glows bright and a geyser blast of water erupts from your outstretched hand. Uh, coats the beam, uh, the, the water corrodes it, the fire eats into it, and it snaps in half and clears the hallway. Absolutely everything that we need to know about Ricky is packed into this short clip. He's a firefighter who loves to help and save people. He cares deeply about safety, and he's a really nice guy, and he's not that bright. We also learn that he's a little bit magic. But let's take a closer look at exactly how Zach introduces Ricky. I'm uh, Ricky Matsui. I'm a, a firefighter in New York, uh, specifically in Brooklyn. Uh, I believe in just doing the right thing. And I, I always wanted to be a firefighter, so I accomplished that goal. So feeling really good about myself. I'm pretty much set for life, I guess. <laughs> Um, and I'm just here to help. Zach packs so much personality into these just couple of sentences. And he does this not just with economical wording, but also with his voice and his mannerisms. He's a firefighter. He's always wanted to be a firefighter. He believes in doing the right thing. He feels good about himself and he is here to help. That is Ricky Matsui in a nutshell. Zach built Ricky on a popular character archetype pure-hearted, brave, and dumb. A himbo, which means he doesn't really need to communicate all that much about Ricky if he can just get across to the audience that he is a himbo. We know what that means, and we can quickly internalize who Ricky is in that way. And if he stopped there, Ricky would not be particularly interesting. He'd be a type of character we've seen a million times, and it's not necessarily a bad one, but it's also not one that really stands out much. And to be perfectly honest, when it comes to, like, on-paper character work, there isn't that much more to analyze. In the first season, Ricky doesn't really have much of a character arc, except for a romantic subplot. He's the exact same Ricky from the beginning to the end. But what makes Ricky special is how dedicated Zack is to these simple ideas, and how sincere Ricky is in believing them. Let's take a look at a clip that I think is really important to Ricky's character. The two figures look over at you, Ricky, and kind of regard you coolly. And Esther turns around, uh, not crying, looks like she's got it together, and goes, all right, we can head out, Ricky. I'm Ricky, by the way. You see that uh, the old woman says, what darkness lies in the heart of Ricky Matsui? <laughs> uh, Esther goes, no! And you see that uh, she opens a portal. It's like light comes out of your heart. And she's like, darkness reveal itself. So I, um. Where is the dark, darkness reveal? Yeah, let me, I don't know. Is it in there? Look <laughs> at this normally. Darkness reveal itself. I get to take a couple steps closer. Like, I don't, don't help me do this. <laughs> fine, 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 that's insane. Something's wrong with you. Honestly, oh. that's your darkness, is that, that, is that that's, that situation is insane. <laughs> yeah, okay, got, do you want a calendar? Okay. <laughs> what I love about this scene is it shows that Zack is willing to fully commit to his character concept. Ricky is genuinely pure-hearted. He has no darkness, he's a good guy. No ulterior motives, no secret agenda, just a genuine desire to help. I think that this was a great decision, because if they made it so there was a sliver of darkness in Ricky, then one, that would not have been as funny, and two, it would have kind of cheapened character. The point is that he's a simple, pure person. To complicate that would oddly cheapen it, which is kind of weird because you usually hear the opposite advice. Make your characters complex in any way that you can. Give them a checkered past, make them ethically ambiguous, and give them complicated relationships, etc, etc. And that can be really great advice. Complicated characters are a lot of fun. 
but sometimes deeply simple characters can be just as interesting in their simplicity. But it does require you to commit to those ideas, like Zack does here. But this could also lead to a very flat character, uninteresting and devoid of life. Ricky is anything but. And part of that is just Zack is a really great performer, he's funny, he's charismatic, and he's really great at embodying his characters, but that's not very helpful analysis or advice. So regardless of any one person's skill as a performer, how does someone pull this kind of thing off? Keep a character pure and simple while also making them feel alive. And I think a lot of that comes down to a compelling emotional core. Beneath that simple concept is a real person with thoughts and feelings. There's something there for everybody. It could be anger, sorrow, ambition, any compelling emotion really. Something for the rest of us to relate to, despise, or admire. Give us a chance to see under the hood, a brief exposure to the core of who that person is. And for Ricky, that is his sincerity. If you lay down your axe and let me enter the world, I can give you everything you've ever wanted. And you see visions of a living and not in danger Esther, your parents welcoming grandchildren into the world. You see all of the things that could happen with a happy and safe life. All of the riches and comfort that your parents worked so hard, came to this country to get for you, would be yours. You don't have to fight your friends. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. I just want to ask if you will lay down your weapon and let me pass. I can make all of these dreams come true. See Esther holding like a child, you with a whole home gym. <laughs> You're talking fly machine, uh, free bench, bench, free bench, incline, all kind of full weights rack of weights, a full rack of weights. <laughs> uh, but that's just my dream, right? It's not mm -hmm. anyone else's dream. The angel looks at you uncomprehendingly. But everyone else should be able to. It sh there should be the potential for everyone to have a dream. Will you submit and lay down your weapon? No. In this scene, Ricky is offered everything he's ever wanted in life if he just lets the villain into the real world to wreak havoc. And there's a moment where Ricky thinks about it, but it's not a long moment. Pretty quickly and decidedly, Ricky refuses. Because to him, his dream is just one of many. Just because it's his dream doesn't mean it takes precedent over everyone else's. He wants everyone to have their dreams, even if it comes at the cost of his own. And it's partially the reason behind Ricky's refusal and partially how Zack plays the moment. But to me, I really feel like I'm seeing the core of who Ricky Matsui is. Now, that's not a surprise. We know who he is. He's told us exactly who he was right out of the gate. But it's one thing to be told, and another to see it in action, in such a high-stakes, emotionally charged moment. It's a moment that's pure and raw, and we get to see that for once, a character is exactly who he told us he is. Which I think is a pretty unique thing. I mentioned earlier that Ricky is pretty much the same at the beginning of Season 1 and at the end of Season 1, because he doesn't really have much of a character arc. And to be clear, that is not a problem. But if you are interested in having a character arc in your TTRPG, then you can check out the video I made a while back about how Ali Beardsley makes character arcs. If you found this video interesting, entertaining, or helpful, I would really appreciate it if you liked, left a comment, and subscribed. And if you really enjoyed the video, consider becoming a channel member and see my videos early and get your name shouted out at the end of videos. Shout out to my channel members, Vif Fox, Caleb Egginsberger, Zinan, Ali Asylum, Wellaboot1, FireGen1, Paloma Hernando, my mom, Moon Nerdy, and Weston Bradshaw. Thank you so much for watching.